the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We see in this gospel passage that more attention is being paid to the dispute after the casting out of the demon than to the healing itself. Now, uh, this is probably the author's uh, intention because it does say that the, the uh, people were very much excited or in an uproar about it. And there are several questions that are raised. Uh, first is, uh, Jesus use, does Jesus use Satan's power to drive out Satan's servants? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And the Lord, of course, points that out. If so, then Satan's kingdom is doomed. Division means uh, that much closer to extinction, to being doomed. Uh, the, uh, this is a uh, similar charge he points out could be leveled against the Jewish exorcists. The difference between the Jewish exorcists and Jesus, of course, was that they had to go through, in the name of God, a whole lot of incantations and, and uh, other things in order to uh, get the Lord to, uh, and pretty much beg the Lord to come and, and uh, lift this demon out of the person and, uh, and heal them. And, uh, but Jesus, of course, does it with a word does it with a word because he is the God to whom these other guys were simply praying. So, uh, and, and so it is pointed out by our Lord that uh, the strong man parable that he tells, the strong man in this parable is Satan himself. And he's got a place, he's rooted in someone and he's uh, uh, guarding, uh, guarding that person with every... Uh, everything he's got the only way he could be he could be um, overcome is by one who's stronger than he is well if you know anything about satan you know that his original name was lucifer he was the brightest and the best among the angels the fall of the angels preceded our fall it came in a twinkling of an eye it is said uh, in tradition that the Lord uh, gave uh, Satan and the, gave all the angels the vision uh, that uh, he someday himself would become a man, he, the vision of the incarnation, basically. And Satan uh, was hit with that subtle but uh, deadly sin of envy. Comes out of pride, of course, but the envy, and why him? Why somebody from that lowly race? To angels, we're just like worms. I mean, we're nothing in terms of what the original gifts uh, uh, that were given. And he took uh, the book of uh, the Apocalypse tells us he swept a third the other angels uh, from the sky. Uh, so it's, it's okay for us because we still have them two to one. Uh, defending us, which is whew, glad about that. Um, uh, so, but uh, Satan wanted, he thought he could have his own kingdom without God. If you get back to, what, to our sins, you see that uh, the sin of Eve and then Adam was that envy, that envy. What, make, what pushes her over the edge and Adam over the edge is the idea they can be like God. Well, gee, you know, <laughs> that's exactly what Lucifer said uh, before he became Satan. And uh, the, the difference is that human beings live uh, in time and space. And uh, because we are limited beings, we're not pure spiritual beings, uh, we have a progression of things that we experience, progression of things that we do. And uh, so we have the chance to repent. The angels were so much more powerful than us that those who sinned, uh, it was, they, they sinned fully knowing every single thing that was to come and they still rebelled against God, wanted to do things their way. And that rebellion, of course, continues to today. 
Uh, I don't think they have any delusions at this point that they can be they can overcome God Himself, but they certainly want they envy Him, and they want their revenge. The revenge will be taken out against guess whom? Us. Revenge is to win us over to their side. This is the warfare into which every single human being is born, and uh, so our Lord says what does he say he says there's no in effect there's no sitting on the fence whoever gather uh, whoever uh, gathers for me is is going to be saved whoever scatters is accepting division scatters refers in this case to uh, satan's causing divisions i was talking with our uh, new and our seasoned servers yesterday at the rehearsal um, and uh, ask them uh, uh, why, is, why is there such military precision required of everyone who acts, in, who is a, a minister of some sort, some level, in this traditional mass? Why is it so important that everybody try to be just as much in line on time uh, always? The reason is it's order, it's order. And things are in order that's from God God is orderly he made the world to work in a certain way he made human nature as an unchanging basis for each one of us we share in the human nature and as we know it comes in only two genders uh, that's one of the aspects of our nature so um, when, when uh, Satan is around, then the divisions come. Satan, I, I, ask, I ask them, who's a, who causes uh, division? Immediately the answer is Satan. Satan's about dividing us from, our, from ourselves and from each other. Uh, so the antidote I would suggest to you uh, is a well, well said mass. Father Willie does a well-said Mass. The uh, traditional Latin Mass, uh, for many of us, uh, we get that sense. We see it more in this Mass precisely because of the order. So the bells are blessed, and guess who hates the bells? The demons. The uh, Gregorian chant is a blessed chant that follows, uh, arose out of the language of a mass, and guess who hates Gregorian chant? The demons. The order is, is hated by the devil. Transubstantiation, of course, is hated by the devil. It's God's work, which all attempts to imitate, imitate it that hell can muster, whether it's the spells and incantan incantations of witches, or every other adult occult practice uh, even obsessions and possessions, these cannot, in the, ne in the face of Jesus Christ's presence, fundamentally change the image of God within us and God's love for us. So what does it mean for us? Well, don't go home and hide under the bed. <laughs> They're spiritual beings, they could find you anyway. Like I say, we have them outnumbered two to one. And, but we do have our part very definitely to play. And that part is to recognize that we are in this life, we are in a spiritual combat. And, and we need therefore to be um, like a householder who guards his possessions. Our possession is our soul and the, soul, the souls of our family members. We need to be always watchful due to our frail and fallen human nature. Uh, we see what happens from Jesus' parable about the unclean spirit who gets cast out and then is wandering. There will be blowback, as they call it, for when we try to do good, you may have already experienced it, many of us have, uh, you try to do good, what's that saying? That is a secular saying, but it actually has a good Christian message in it. Uh, no good deed goes unpunished. And there's a real sense uh, in, in which that really is true. 
there will be blowback. If you're here today, there will be blowback from the dark side. Those who are learning to serve, there will be blowback from that. I don't kind of don't want to get up and all that. But, you know, those who are ordained experience uh, uh, that that temptation to uh, be lax, that temptation to uh, um, uh, you know kind of give up or let somebody else handle it. Uh, these are the things that uh, we are born into. We have to be on our guard. We have to have a healthy, not a self-loathing, but a healthy distrust of the self and a total and absolute trust in our Lord Jesus Christ. And His real presence remains among His people. And the Mass allows us to walk through His life-giving sacrifice all over again. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.